Hello, I'm Stephanie Humphrey, technology and lifestyle expert. So before I get started, I want to shout out all the entrepreneurs and startup founders who might be watching. Congratulations. This TEDx is not for you. Startup culture and entrepreneurship and technology has made it an incredibly attractive world to want to be in. I mean, venture capital just sounds sexy, right? And don't get me wrong, I can appreciate the opportunities it's provided for those people traditionally underrepresented in the space to have a seat at the table, or better yet, build tables of our own. So I'm really not hating, but I can't help but feel like there's some folks being left out of the conversation. Where's all the hoopla for those people with more conventional roles in technology? The ones who took a more traditional path, earning STEM degrees from four-year colleges, even though it might have took us five years to graduate, and taking roles at more orthodox companies that have been around for longer than five or 10 years, but still want to grow, advance, and maybe even go viral in their careers. I was one of those people. I earned two engineering degrees and I spent 13 years as a systems engineer for a Fortune 500 company. But I never felt quite satisfied or fulfilled and I didn't really see a path forward for myself there, especially in a time when everybody seemed to be obsessed with the latest big tech thing. So how did I go from Stephanie Humphrey a uh, regular, degular, schmegular systems engineer to Stephanie Humphrey, nationally syndicated media contributor and tech journalist. I applied the same principles of innovation to my tech career as entrepreneurs apply to startups, and today I have four points that can help you do that too. First, you are going to have to ideate. And yes, I will be using all of the same buzzwords that startup founders do. When I made the decision to leave the cubicle life I was living, I had a couple of different ideas of what I might do. I had a very short-lived fitness career. I acted and modeled and hosted on the side. And I even entertained new roles at internet startups, go figure. But what does this look like for you, especially if you're not looking to leave your current company? Well, first, do a brain dump of all the business units and all the available roles you might be interested in, and make sure you're writing that all down. Next, set up informational interviews inside and outside your company, and use your network to explore potential new career pathways. Ask to shadow or offer to volunteer so you can get insight into other areas at your job. And crowdsource. Ask your friends, your colleagues, your mentors to assess your strengths and weaknesses and maybe help you to identify some blind spots where you didn't really see your career going. And while you're doing all this, make sure you are understanding what you don't want to do at the same time as you're figuring out what you do want to do. Second, you are likely going to have to upskill. Before I was a contributor on Good Morning America, I was a contributor on Good Day Philadelphia. And before that, I reported traffic for my local news. And before that, I produced and hosted my own local show on the neighborhood public access station. I took acting lessons, hosting and spokesperson classes, I even took a makeup class at Mac to learn how to do my makeup for TV because on-camera makeup can be a little different than in real life makeup. Media was a new area I was getting into, so I wanted to make sure I was doing everything I could to prepare myself. For you, that could mean a lot of different things. There are no shortage of certifications you could study for. I hear AWS is pretty popular these days. 
You can enroll in a leadership or some other type of professional development course. You could go back to school and get a whole nother degree. Or you might have to get your 10,000 hours on your own, teaching yourself how to code or through some other experience. But make sure you're being honest with yourself about where your skill level is currently and where it needs to go to get you to that next level. Because I have been there and I know how deceptively easy it can be to get comfortable doing a similar type of thing every day and getting paid well to do it and then one day looking up and realizing you've been coasting along on skills you learned years ago. Keep in mind that upskilling may also require an investment in new resources. As a content creator, I've done more to upgrade my processes and my workspaces in the last 18 months than I have in the past two years. New camera, new lighting, new audio, a new studio backdrop to shoot in. Y'all, I was out here painting walls and putting together IKEA bookshelves and everything. So for you, maybe it's time to invest in that new laptop you were thinking about, or new lighting, or a new webcam, or maybe upgrading that work from home space so that it doesn't look like you're in a dark corner of your basement on your next Zoom meeting, even if you are in a corner of your basement. It's small things like that that go a long way towards how you're perceived at work, especially as you're looking to grow and advance your career. Third, get ready to disrupt. And I can't front, I used to hate that term because I thought it was way overused and it low key held a negative connotation for me. But I realized it just means doing things differently than they've been done before. And the first thing I want you to think differently about is your mindset. As popular and ubiquitous a term as it is, it still surprises me that most of the more traditional STEM professionals I speak to still don't consider their personal brand as a tool that can help them advance their career. We are all walking billboards, i.e. personal brands, and you have to make an effort to be intentional about how you build that brand. First, by acknowledging that it is a thing, but also by understanding that you have control over how it gets developed. And you can start simple. LinkedIn is the world's largest professional social network. It's low hanging fruit and it's not something you use when you're just looking for work anymore. Your LinkedIn profile should be a showcase of your accomplishments, your experience, your education, and your interests. And because I like you, I got some pro tips for you. Number one, don't leave your cover photo blank. That is valuable real estate where you get a chance to highlight awards, accomplishments, skills, experience, interests, or just your personality. So take advantage of that opportunity to personalize and let people know a little bit more about your brand. Number two, groups can help you get in touch with hard to reach people. If there's somebody you wanna connect with on LinkedIn that has their privacy settings locked down so you can't send them an invite to connect, can't slide into those DMs, if you're a member of the same group, you can message them through the group. And third, take advantage of the QR code in the app to connect with people in real time. Now, there is no shortage of ways to do this electronically, but since you already have this digital resume ready to share on this platform, take advantage of the app, of the QR code in the app to connect with people in real time and ditch the business cards, please. At the end of the day, though, building a brand is about content. So you are going to have to figure out how to make yourself more visible. This could mean speaking at industry events, writing in your area of expertise on LinkedIn or your company's newsletter or your own blog. Video is huge and it is not going anywhere. So if you're comfortable doing it, it is one of the most effective ways to engage an audience on any digital platform and quickly start to build your personal brand. But whatever you do, be clear about who you are, 
be consistent with your message, and be authentic. And while you're doing all this brand building, think about ways you could be disrupting how things get done at your job. If you've noticed a way to improve a process or streamline a procedure, don't be afraid to go against the grain to suggest a new way of doing things. That'll go a long way towards establishing your brand as an innovator among your peers. Just because something's never been done before doesn't mean you can't be the one to do it. I mean, think about it. How many black women do you know that talk about technology regularly on national television? Sometimes it's okay to be one of one. And finally, be prepared to pivot. I'm gonna let y'all in on a little secret. I didn't leave my engineering job to become a technology contributor. I wanted to be an entertainment reporter. You could not tell me I was not gonna be on somebody's red carpet asking celebrities, who are you wearing? And I worked for four years after I left my job towards that goal. And when I finally got a meeting with a cable executive that I had been trying to get for over six months, all I could think was, I am not throwing away my shot. So you can imagine my surprise when 10 minutes into the meeting, he looks at me and asks, what are you doing? And as I try to gather myself and not cry in front of this person I had just met, he explained to me that he didn't understand why I wasn't using what I already had, my education, my experience, my training, to build a personal brand for myself in media around that. And while it was truly my aha moment, and I am grateful for it because I wouldn't be standing here today if not for that conversation, it still required a major shift in the work I had been doing for years. So after four years of schlepping to auditions, doing on-camera work for free for exposure, and networking anywhere and with anyone I thought could put me on, I basically had to rebuild my brand from scratch to position myself as a tech expert and pursue opportunities in writing and broadcast in that space. So that's exactly what I did. Don't be afraid to be honest with yourself about when it might be time to pivot and change directions. If it feels like you're swimming upstream, it could be because you're going the wrong way. And while it may disrupt your life to make such a major change, you also have to consider the possibility that your career advancement may not come at your current place of employment. But pivoting is easy. Plan and execute. It sounds like a ginormous oversimplification, but as an engineer, I can assure you that starting with an outcome, working backwards, and breaking down the steps to reach that outcome into individual pieces actually works. The hard part is not feeling like you have to stick to an arbitrary timeline. It took me over two years to leave my job as I was executing my plan, and I wasn't 22 years old when I did it either. Not feeling like you have to do the same thing everyone else is doing. Entrepreneurship is hard, y'all, and it is not for everyone, and there is no shame in going from one more conventional corporation to another more conventional corporation. Now, if you have a billion dollar idea, by all means, go for it, but don't feel compelled to go down that startup route just because you think that's what everyone else is doing. And not feeling, not listening to all the reasons why your plan won't work from the voices inside and outside your head. Change is scary for you and the people around you, but that is never a reason not to do it. So while I got love for all my startup founders, I really do, my hope is that all of my peoples in STEM 
can innovate their careers to success in whatever way works best for them. Thank you.